inside the papers uh, today, um, we're going to be talking on the programme, the report I've done about research into brain cancer, mm. uh, pegged to Laura Nuttall, whose story we've reported a fair bit on the, on the programme over the last few years. Um, the scientific community will be, will be pleased, I'm sure, to hear that a deal, according to this story in The Times today, is close for Britain to rejoin the EU's Horizon Research Scheme. Remember, we left that as a result of Brexit. Uh, but a new deal is on the verge of being thrashed out, apparently, with sources in London and Brussels, the paper says, saying that they expect an announcement as soon as next month, following significant progress. Anything into increasing research and results, yeah. as you would have known from talking to Laura's mum. Exactly. Now, we've uh, followed the story of Laura Nuttall, as you might know closely on the programme. She was diagnosed with an aggressive type of brain tumour and spent five years ticking off her bucket list of dreams and inspiring others along the way. And Laura died in May, and she was aged just 23 years. She donated her brain for research because she wanted to find a way to offer hope to others who had the same tumour. Now, you've been catching up with her and her family who've been familiar to this programme, haven't mm. they? But they definitely want to keep the legacy of Laura alive, particularly her mum. Yeah, and I followed uh, Laura's mum, Nicola, as she uh, went along to uh, continue their campaign for better treatment. As part of Glass, we within my group... She's anything but another face in the crowd. Laura Nuttall's mum, Nicola, joined a record number of delegates at the recent British Neuro-Oncology Society conference in Manchester, a three-day event bringing together brain cancer experts from across the country to share their experiences and research. And we also do see... A lot of people here are either scientists or medics and, and actually they've been really interested in what our own experiences have been like with things like what, what it's like to be on the receiving end of treatment. So it's been quite valuable in that sense as well to get the message out. <laughs> Nicola was joined by other campaigners from Our Brain Bank who are calling for more investment to tackle a cancer which, although it only accounts for 3% of tumours, is the biggest cancer killer of under 40s. Like Laura, Richard's wife, Jaina, and Esther's husband, Stuart, both had the most aggressive tumour, glioblastoma. One of the first things that the, we were told was, don't Google it. What we need is more information about glioblastoma, more information about how to spot the symptoms, uh, and in particular, more information about what you need to do fast in order to maximise the chance that you'll have some benefit from treatment. It took us a while to find all the information that we needed and so that puts a delay on things whereas if, if people are told about these treatments or possible treatment options in the beginning then things will happen sooner. Research will be key to any breakthrough and the need to collect tissue from tumours so treatments can be targeted and improved. The conference heard that new guidance for surgeons could enable that. This is considered to be an incurable disease, but something is only incurable until we find a cure. Thankfully, these tumours are rare, but the flip side of that is it means that we don't have as much material from patients. But with enough funding, we are going to be able to make those advancements, and I do believe that there is going to be, yeah, huge leaps in our ability to handle this disease. But breakthroughs also won't happen without places like this. The Manchester Brain Bank is one of ten in the country, supplying tissue to scientists across the world. It's played a crucial role in enabling new treatments for illnesses like dementia and Parkinson's disease. They're now working more with tumours, all from brains donated after patients have died. What we do here at the Brain Bank is really the very, the very ground floor of, of the type of research that needs to be done, but you can't build on research unless you've got that ground floor. So having these brains and allowing, them, allowing researchers to be able to access these brains means that things will move forward instead of stagnating. Laura wanted her brain to be used to help others. It's particularly valuable because the effect of the treatment she was able to access, like immunotherapy here in Germany, can be analysed. It's now with a thousand others at the brain bank. Brain tumors tend to be stay very closely within the brain, but they extend miles away from the primary tumour. And it's not something you can treat with, with radiotherapy or even with chemotherapy. Um, so it's a unique, very difficult situation to manage. A surgeon at the conference described that as invading through the brain, telling me that any eventual victory over this most sinister of cancers will come from treatments or drugs, not the blade of his scalpel. And there are reasons for cautious optimism. We've heard at this conference 
um, this week that a new treatment for patients with lower grade brain tumours has suddenly had a very dramatic effect in delaying the progression of those tumours. And for the more malignant higher grade tumours in the brain, surgical techniques, chemotherapy changes, I think there's immunotherapy treatments around the corner. So things have moved on, they just haven't moved on as far and as fast as we would have liked them to. Any progress is too late for Laura. She lived life to the full, packing more into her 23 years than many manage in a much longer lifetime. It's hoped her legacy will help others far into the future. Without Laura and people like Laura pu pushing the case for brain tumours, then you know, the, the work that we need to do will struggle to get done. It's what Laura would have expected from me. I don't want this story to end with Laura. I want, I want to look back. Uh, in five years' time and say, look what we did for you. <laughs> that would be quite some legacy if some kind of a, a new treatment can come about thanks to Laura's donation.